this is an interesting clip because this features uh brendan and brian basically talking about how proud they were to be one of the only comics at the time during the height of covid to be touring and how that led to loads of super spreader events and it led to them being featured on the newspaper of a local place they were at because of their spreading of the flipping virus and the fact that they got called out for it online about it and stuff and had to delete posts so the fact that he's gloating and they're kind of you know smiling about it now it's funny because i remember post it happening or during the time it happening certain posts that they uploaded got deleted and shit like they weren't that proud of it so it's funny to see them you know kind of talk about it um after the fact but this is an interesting bit of history that happened during the pandemic that i think negatively affected them and the podcast but hey they probably don't care about that do they so i'm out on san antonio and I said, that green room right there, I have this bit on COVID, I go, long-term side effects, I go, that so green true. room right there is where I got COVID. And then we were on the front page of their uh, San Antonio Express, the main newspaper. And I said, your newspaper wants to put me on the front cover? It was like, uh, I would say, uh, LA Comedian brings COVID to San Antonio. I'm like, no, nah, bitch, you guys gave me COVID. I got COVID here. Yeah. I remember that very well. I remember we, it's a weird thing to say, isn't it? You got COVID there, but you can still spread it when you're there. The, the, all our friends were there. We're in the green room. This right. is the bright, this is before anybody really had it. Yep. Remember people telling us to shut down touring? And then you and I are in the green room. I looked at him like, get a chance to get COVID here. Well, because I got an alert on my, we had 400 people waiting. <laughs> and I got an alert on my phone saying we were in the hot spot, literally, of the United States. We were all dancing. And yeah, I was like, whatever. I was like, oh, I get man. Like one of those things on your phone. I was like, nah, it's fine. And then we got Smile. it. Then we got it. And people were so upset. They call the time, super spreaders. People didn't know really, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. But back then we just didn't know. People were so mad. Fuck off. So mad. Number one, I think it's really interesting that they laugh about this now, given or after the fact, because I feel like oddly enough, maybe it's just from my point of view, this is probably the time it really turned me off them as people forget the not being funny side of things but when i was like raw especially in the beginning at the at the height of covid when we didn't know much about the virus when we were all scared when you know gathering in groups was basically illegal and maybe would you basically you signing your own death warrant it just seemed pretty weird that these guys who weren't that great at comedy and were also pretty rich at the time and doing pretty well on podcasts would go that far out of their way to go and perform in the midst of everything that was going on it just felt like really lacking in sympathy empathy understanding or just trying to be what's that term everyone was using during covid i think of the greater good because i think that's one thing we realize quite often or quite quickly with covid in the western um in in west uh, in, in the west in general right if especially when you compare it to stuff that was going on in far east asia there was less it's sort of like a unison and thinking of the other man when COVID was happening. Everyone just basically looked after themselves. But we kind of effed ourselves because we weren't able to just think of our other, other man and think, hey, if I'm sick, stay at home, all this sort of stuff we didn't necessarily do. We kind of just bucked the trend on that. Don't even start talking about masks because the mask debate was incredibly politicized from the minute zero. But the lack of consideration we had for each other it made things worse. And then it added an extra level of confusion when the governments came in and started giving us false information and making stuff worse than what it was, whatever it may be. But I feel like the lack of consideration we had for each other is what really made things worse. So I remember watching it from afar thinking, hold on, these guys aren't that important. Why are they acting as if like them doing comedy is the number one important thing in this economy, in this world right now? They have to go and perform these fucking shitty shows for a hundred people. Like who cares? Who legitimately cares? But then also at the time, for the sake of the customers, there was also this feeling that people didn't want to be at home just listening to doom and gloom news about COVID all day and wanted to have a distraction. So if a distraction meant going to see these two buffoons do comedy, eat some flipping ch chicken fingers and have a couple of cocktails, then so be it. It was a chance to kind of disconnect from the world. But I just remember feeling f f not, I don't really care about the customers. I think, you know, partners can do what they want to do. But I just felt from the comic side of things, I was like, why are these comics acting as if they're like essential workers? Like legitimately, they're providing an essential service. Like you're not, no one cares. Like you can make it just about enough money being at home, sitting on your ass doing a podcast every single day. This is clearly uh, something more than that. And it kind of revealed, I think for most of us, that a lot of these guys are incredibly incredibly narcissistic to the point where they need to perform in front of a crowd because that's kind of their dopamine hit that they get during the week 
or during the weekend if they don't do drugs they need that validation of being in front of a crowd they need that adoration that the laughs the claps the flipping applause whatever it may be that's their flipping life force so when these comedians livelihoods was interrupted and had no ability to do so that's why some of them panicked so much right flipping dave Chappelle bought an entire town and started performing comedy um flipping what's his face uh Bert crash was doing comedy in fucking car parks with people watching him you know sitting in it sitting on their cars and stuff or inside their cars like this little tailgate comedy shit people are doing stuff on zoom these guys need the attention they need it badly it's like what makes them breathe so it was interesting to see it on all scales from that the shittiest comics are the highest ones they needed it but during the time of the pandemic you know at the best of times who fucking needs comedy who gives a fuck and it felt like in the worst of times who needs a who gives a fuck about these guys so it just made me laugh so i think most people who are sensible who are normal probably felt the same way or maybe worse and i have a feeling a lot of the negative sentiment around them started around it i think it started around it i think they lost a lot of fans around it yes i think a lot of it came off the back of the whole the leah stuff and the brian callan you know rape allegation stuff i'm sure but i also feel like a lot of their unnecessary hate and stick that they got was because of their reaction to covid how they acted towards the vaccine the things that they said on their podcast basically turned people off i don't believe it got them shadow banned i just think fans lost interest and maybe got turned off on them as humans especially brandon because he got it 17 times or something right spread it to bare people like it got really crazy he gave it to his whole family like insane. <laughs> so clearly there was an issue there i don't know it's just funny to see them kind of laughing about it now and trying to act like it wasn't that big of a deal when i think that may have contributed to their overall flipping lack of you know success you know going forward um and just contribute maybe to the overall grand demise of them as a show maybe it's just me though i don't know uh, what are people saying here in the chat um yeah most podcasts are looking funnier than most stand up da, da, da. so jack mine i think it's all about the chris Lear stuff jack miller says tim Dillon is basic to me i feel like he was a level in 1998 when i was 12 cats was so good when it started real shame with what it is now we just says I hate to admit it, but when I had to move back to the States to COVID, I discovered all these podcasts and Cats was one of the first ones and Shub happened to be playing at the Hilarity. So me and him and Chappelle were one of the first acts I ever saw and the place was practically empty. I couldn't believe these podcasters that made me laugh was so bad at stand up. Yeah, I think I think that's the thing that I remember thinking when I was critiquing one of the specials. I was like, I don't actually get why some of these guys even bother doing stand up especially some of the guys who have podcasts that are really popular, like a Fear of Vaughan's a good example, because Fear of Vaughan's stand-up does not match his podcasting at all. The guy is legitimately one of the funniest comedians out there. He's legitimately one of the only people in that podcasting scene who can hold down a podcast on his own, with jokes included. His interviews that he does are flipping amazing. We interview someone from a plumber to a guy that works at a morgue to like a person in a band. Amazing. And for the most part, most of these guys, yes, they're not making Joe Rogan money, but they make a decent amount of money on their podcast, like enough to look after themselves and their family members, right? Good, good money. So the only other thing I can think of when it comes to stand up, the money's just too good to leave on the table. Like to do a weekend, if somebody's offering you, let's say anywhere between like 10 to 50 grand to do a couple of days during a weekend, maybe a further to a Saturday which is essentially how long is your set? Maybe a 30 minutes, maybe an hour, right? In terms of your set, it's too much money to leave on the table, isn't it? Like 50 grand to do three days. Even if you're not good at stand-up, what's the worst that can happen? Do you know what I mean? All your fans are going to be there anyway. You're not going to have any randoms turning up. So that kind of mitigates any kind of risk. And even if it is terrible, just rinse and repeat in another location. Just don't go back to the same place twice. You know what I mean? It's not that hard to do. So maybe that's the reason behind it, but... I don't know, man. I feel like a lot of them would be best served just doubling down on the podcast and just do more videos and stuff. I just don't think it's worth it because I think the more they do stand up, the more people start to, especially those guys that love to talk about the stand up business or the business of stand up. People don't understand stand up comedians. We're special. You guys are civilians. Then you watch their specials. And you're like, hold on, you guys are shit. You talk about jokes and about specials and who should stand up and who's not a stand up on the business of it, all this inside baseball stuff, but you're terrible at what you do. So maybe, no, I feel like it hurts them in general. I feel like it's not something that you probably should do. Probably maybe just focus on the fucking, um, 
uh, podcasting side of things personally but you know maybe I'm not really correct in that regard of things because I don't really view it from their side of things but I thought that was an interesting perspective anyway we'll, 